Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Today I thought I would try a full, well kind of full face, of just like weird products. Um, some of them are like proper weird and you're gonna be like, yeah, that's weird. That's a weird product. And some of them are kind of just things that I think are a little bit different. Just kind of like weird and wacky products. I don't know quite what I'm gonna call this video, but just, they're just a full face of just products that are kind of a bit odd. And if you're new here around these parts, hello, welcome, my name is Meg, and I like to talk about all the superficial things around here, all the things that don't really matter but bring us a little bit of joy in the everyday grind that is life. All the things, makeup, skincare, hair care, fashion, and homeware, we talk about them all in some capacity. It's mostly beauty, but I do like to touch on all those subjects a little bit, you know, here and there, sprinkle a little bit of joy everywhere. So if you're not part of the family, please do hit subscribe down below and join my circle of trust. And let's get into it. I've got a full face of weird products in front of me. Let's do it. Hello. So these have been sitting here for a while, um, <laughs> collecting a little bit of dust, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but the first thing I'm gonna talk about here is this Pericone MD, no makeup, instant blur, compact effect, compact. It's a primer and I think it looks weird. So this is the box. I actually got this in like a glossy box or a rocker box. So this is what the product looks like. Oh, hello. Hello! Um, so this is what the product looks like. On the back, it's just got Pericone Instant Blur, like, you know, like whatever. Um, and then we click it open, and we've got a cute little mirror in here that's got a sticker on it, a little puff pad, and if by magic, a little door. So the little door opens up to this. Look how weird this is. I have actually swatched it, so that big circle there is me swatching it. That's when I got it in the glossy box or rocker box, whatever it was. So uh, I don't know about this. Not sure about this little fella, but maybe I was thinking we could do half on one side, half on the other to see how it works. I think I wanna just try with my finger first. This is kind of like a putty, like texture, I suppose you could call it. It's just a generally weird texture. Sorry, I'm flipping you off. It's just like a really, really weird texture. So um, I think I'm just gonna press this onto my right side of my face. Oh, I'm not sure about this, you guys. This is weird. This is odd. It feels very soft. I mean, I can't tell a difference, but it's early days, it's early days. So for foundation, there was no like proper foundation that was like, whoa, you're weird. Um, I'm probably gonna kick myself because I'll probably find one after this video that I think is inherently weird. But the only one I could think of at the moment and is something I haven't actually tried out yet is the Tarte Face Tape Foundation. The only thing I find about this that's weird is just that, well, it's not, it's not really that weird. It's just, it's kind of cool actually. It's an airless pump. It says double duty beauty. It's gonna be a really full coverage foundation. It says full coverage, flawless natural matte finish, and infinite likes that's cheesy as hell i'm gonna try it out though with the weirdest sponge that i think i've ever owned in terms of shape the sport effects sponge which i actually have one on the go already i need to well, give it a wash because um it's collected a tiny bit of dust can we not can we not talk about it um i actually have a brand new one as well because i really liked the sponge i thought it was cool but it was very odd look at the shape of this it's kind of weird this is clean it's just a tiny bit dusty so i need to go wash it so it has a really nice rounded bottom and then it's got this weird sort of geometric side and tip like that which was actually very convenient for like in the corner concealer and color corrector and stuff like that so i'm gonna go wet this you can see the size comparison in the new one and we're gonna apply some weird foundation so here we go, that is the size of the sponge when it uh, is enlarged, enlarged? I don't know, like <laughs> when it's wet, wetted. <laughs> uh, it's kind of literally like double the size. It is quite magnificent how large it gets. Um, and it's nice and squishy. I, I actually really like this sponge. This is a five pound sponge. I feel like that's a really good price for a makeup sponge, um, bearing in mind they last quite a long time if you take good care of them. I feel like below 10 pounds is what I'm willing to spend on a sponge. I don't want to spend more than 10 quid on a sponge. I just think it's ridiculous. Here goes nothing. Good colour, Megan. Yes, Queen. Yes. I mean, it's a full coverage foundation. It doesn't actually look very cakey. I do find full coverage foundations just point, you know, like period. They look they look cakier than more natural luminous sheer foundations. I think that's just inevitable. Like when you have a full coverage foundation, it's just naturally going to be a little bit more makeup y. So far, like looking in the mirror, this is really nice. I'd probably put a setting spray over it just to really sink it into the skin. But for full coverage, I actually have got to say this is probably one of the better forming full coverage foundations I've used in a long time straight off the bat. So I have high hopes. This is the L'Oreal Concealer Blender Brush. They actually call it a concealer blender brush. Look at this. Is this not the weirdest thing? I mean, I have seen these things before, but 
in this day and age are we really are we really using this i want to know are we really using this for our concealer do i have to wet this use the unique sponge blender for even precise uh, concealer application pro tip dab the blender into the formula and apply to the area you wish to conceal apply the formula with the flat side for seamless application and use round side for buildable coverage after use, wash the blender with warm water and soap. Allow to air dry before use. Allow to air dry before use. So they want me to use this dry. I don't know how I feel about that. I got this for free when I bought the L'Oreal Infallible. I wasn't going to use this because I don't think concealers in a pot are that odd. But if they're going to make me use it to dip into, I think I should probably use the appropriate thing. I'm gonna go in dry side first, which makes my skin crawl a little bit because the you, the idea of a dry sponge on my face hurts my soul. I'm gonna go dry side here and then I wanna go wet it and see how it looks wet side, this side, yeah. Here we go, people, flat side in here. Oh, I don't wanna. <laughs> I'm applying, I'm not sure you guys. Okay, I'm gonna, blend out the round side it's the dryness it's getting me it's the dryness i can't handle it oh do you know what makes me sad is people that don't know a lot about makeup and i'm not trying to sound pretentious or rude but people that don't know a lot about makeup will read that and think oh my god yeah pros use this and if i use this i'm gonna look beautiful right now my inner corner the camera's blowing out my inner corner look at this like i think i actually prefer my eye unconcealed this looks horrific can I just say this is also £12, this tool. I didn't actually pay that for it because I bought this and it was like a promo. You got this for like, I don't know, a pound or whatever. And I just thought like, well, I'm buying anyway. Why not try it out? But this is actually daylight robbery. We're not doing this. <laughs> I actually detest that so much. I have to go over the top with this sponge because this is actually a semi-decent concealer. I mean, it's not my favourite by any means, but it's not a bad concealer. And I feel like this tool is genuinely horrific. I think this is not even applying the product nicely, let alone blending it out nicely. So I'm gonna go wet this um, and maybe just compare it to how I just like this sponge, you know, like a normal sponge. Okay, I'm back with a dampened sponge. I'll be really honest, I hold out zero hope. It's retained no moisture. It's just the worst thing I think I've ever seen in terms of tools. But I'm gonna go back in we're gonna try this. We're gonna try this my way. Um, it's picking up the product a bit more smooth, smoothly, smoother. Uh, okay. Well, I've got to say, already, L'Oreal, go eat your words. Go eat those instructions because this is applying much better. And I promise you, I'm putting the same level of effort into this. You can still see patchiness where it just can't, it just won't blend out because of the shape and the density of it. I don't know, I think this is actually just a complete cash grab, it's a waste of money and I quite frankly hate it. It's absolutely horrific so I'm gonna finish off with my nicer sponge. Okay next up brow products and I'm actually really excited about this because this is by Benefit. These two products I feel are the weirdest kinds of like weirdest innovations I think I'm gonna call them they're not really like bad weird I just think they're weird like point blank weird um I've got first of all the brow bravo bravo conditioning primer conditioning primer for your brows I'm not gonna lie I bought the mini of this because I'm not wholly convinced that this will do anything or this will have such a dramatic effect that it'll be incorporated into my everyday makeup use so I bought the mini because you know this is what it looks like. I think because it's a mini, it just looks a bit more plastic. The full size looked a little bit bougier, but like that doesn't really bother me. This is what the tip looks like as well. Can you see that there? You can see like these little teeth. I don't know, can you? Wait, there you go, the lighting. I think I was giving it a bit of a shadow. You can see like these teeth situation happening on the top. Oh, and it's rubber. Oh, the whole thing is bendy. Okay, this is intriguing to me. I'm gonna wind it up until I see it. And then I'm gonna show you the product. Can you see that? Oh, look, see? Eee! Okay, 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 we've got enough, we've got enough. I think I've actually applied too much. I wanna apply a tiny bit to the back of my hand just to kind of get it all in there, you know? Get it in those grooves. I'm gonna do exactly what it says and apply it straight to the brows. Oh, I quite like the silicone-ness of it. It's also clear, like that. 
that means anyone can use it. My camera just shut off, which is highly inconvenient, but I actually really like how that just looks already. I don't know that it doesn't look like a difference to you, but actually, to me, my eyebrows do look a tiny bit fluffy with this. That was one go at it. I'm just gonna go another one, just like this much more, this much more, great grammar. This much more product. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna apply a little bit more. I like the applicator. That's what I like about it the most, actually. Hmm, quite like that. <laughs> I might actually buy the full size of this if this continues to look nice. I don't know why, but I, I just like it. I just like it quite a lot. In the meantime though, while this kind of like dries down, it doesn't feel very wet, but just while it dries down, I'm gonna go into the Brow Micro Filling Pen. So this one is the Brow Micro Filling Pen, I'll show you in a minute, but it says, it creates the illusion of natural brow hairs with three ultra fine lines in a single stroke. Designed to blend in with existing hairs, it fills in gaps and makes brows appear where before, where, wait, what? And makes brows appear where before they were none. There were none. 24 hour long wear. Jesus, waterproof, smudge proof, easy to apply and natural looking. This is what the packaging looks like. Very nice, should probably do it the right way around for you. That's probably more helpful. <laughs> um, let's open this up. So this is what the product looks like. I love benefits like packaging of everything. And then, um, can you see that? Those tiny little teeth, tiny little teeth. Um, I'm kind of scared. Here we go. Oh God, where do I start? I think I'm gonna start here. This is too warm. Damn it, it's too warm, it looks red. Damn it, okay. I feel like you can achieve, like I like to always carve out the beneath my brow with a single line, which you can definitely do. And then, just to confirm by the way, this is what it looks like on the hand, which looks like a good color. On my brows however, because they're so ashy, it's looking really warm, I'm hoping I'm hoping it doesn't look like that. Maybe it'll warm to the skin or something, maybe. How do we feel about this? Actually, maybe the color is okay. Maybe once like I have everything else on my face, it'll be okay. Um, because there's no spoolie on the other end, which actually I think I would have liked a spoolie on the other end, just to kind of fluff my brows out. Actually, maybe that is okay. This is my first use with it. And actually, it's not too offensive. Hmm, I think it's both, both really quite cool. I want to bounce back to the face. Now that my face has had some time to set, I don't typically like applying powder with a full coverage foundation because I find that it does get very cakey very quickly. I don't have a weird bronzer as such, but I want to just, I've got like this little Model Co stick bronzer slash contour stick if I feel like I need to have that. I'm thinking we could just do a blush day today. But this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen for a blush. Now I have actually opened this and I swatched it. And as soon as I swatched it, I was like, do you know what? This is a weird product. This product kind of paved the way for this video. This is the Revlon Photo Ready Instant Cheek Maker Blush and Highlight Duo in the shade 002 Rose Quartz and Quartz Rose. It looks like this. So you can see that it has got a dip. I've only ever applied this to the back of my hand and not my cheek. So I don't actually know what it looks like. So you turn this and it goes right way up. So you can see you've got like a highlighter and a blush. I'm not quite sure how that's gonna work. I wanna contort my skin. Okay. I'm gonna use this Sigma, it does look dirty, but I promise you it's not actually like, there's no real product on it, it's just remnants. But I'm gonna use this, it's a duo. Okay, nope. <laughs> Back to the sponge. Ooh, God. This is horrific. This is not making my base look cute. I mean, I kind of get the idea of it. I feel like if this was a bronzer, it'd actually be nice, like a bronzer and blush duo. Maybe, I'm not really too sure. Maybe it's like, it's just a weird shape, or maybe my face is a weird shape. I get the idea, I get the innovation. Not quite sure about it. I think it needs to be more emollient as well. So, also I've got to make sure I start in the right place, like here, okay. <laughs> I think the brush is definitely the way forward, like the, patting motion and this is a very dense very dense kabuki flat top kabuki brush i think that's the way forward it's just to pat and kind of like shimmy the product around like you know working in fast motions i'm gonna just try and take a little bit just off the blush i'm not even too sure that i like the formula of it to be honest with you it's layering on the skin and not as nicely as other blushes do i think that was a better placement than last time i think last time i got it like too far down Mm, 
I'm just not sure you guys. I just think this is a little bit of a gimmick. I'm not sure. Like I feel like it's supposed to be saving you time like whoosh, whoosh, fast on the go girl. But actually what's happening is and this has obviously happened before which is why it looks so janky but you can see here on the back where I've swiped onto my face like the foundation is gathering on the highlighting shade which isn't like necessarily the end of the world but it's a bit like you know I have got a really cool highlighter this is by Ritual Defile Defile Ritual Defee Ritual Defee I'm not sure Teresa is dead bangs on about this brand so much that and she says she absolutely loves it this is the cool packaging it's very alien mistress I love it and this is a metamorphic highlighter in the shade The Siren. And um, what I thought was interesting about this, so firstly, this is the packaging. It looks really, really pretty, really, really like it. Inside is like this creaminess, it's really, really lovely, but it's a metamorphic highlighter, so, oh, it's like proper putty. It's hopefully gonna show up slightly different. Oh, look, there's the brow product. Slightly different, maybe? I don't know, I just thought it was quite an odd, not an odd concept, but just, a little bit different, you know, like a cream highlighter that's just a little bit indie brand as such. That is very yellow. I'm not seeing much metamorphosis happening here. I mean, it's very nice. It's like wet looking, I think. I'm not sure. Hang on, let me just build this up. You know, guys, I'm not sure about this highlight. It's pretty, okay? It's, it's pretty highlighter. Um, but I don't know if you can see that. But the thing is, is it's offering this very very subtle wet looking glow which is lovely from afar like this is actually really lovely it's very kind of dewy kind of really healthy skin looking but once you get closer i don't know if you can see kind of a little bit of the texture that it's giving off like here it's just like sitting on the face a bit much i don't know if the camera's blowing out a little bit but it's just sitting on the face a little bit you can kind of see I prefer my Colourpop ones if I'm really honest and that's a fraction of the price so I'm not disappointed I, I like it I think it'd be nice on a more natural base maybe full coverage is not what it's meant to be I'm gonna have to try this one out further but so far it's like a six out of ten Okay, you're gonna laugh at me because you're gonna be like, this isn't a weird product, Megan. This is just like a normal palette. I think it's weird, okay? But it's a Naked Reloaded palette. The reason why I think this is odd is because one, the packaging feels like a blouse, which is odd because makeup is messy. I don't know why you'd go for material, uh, especially this material. It's not wipeable, it's stainable. So I'm gonna have to keep the box for this. Another thing I don't like is the pan size. This is weird to me. This is very weird. I appreciate there's different pan sizes in palettes. I don't find that weird. What I find weird is that we've got the normal size Urban Decay pans here. Cool, that's not weird. We've got two larger pans here, which I wouldn't find weird if they were the same size. Why have we got this large, medium and small? Large, medium and small. I don't understand. I don't understand. Also, what promotes the paler shades for being the biggest and then the darkest for being the smallest. That's a white girl decision. Um, just gonna call it how I see it. What the hell?
Okay, this is the look I've gone for. Um, it's got a little bit of fallout, which I was not expecting. I wanna say this formula is much drier than I'm used to from um, Urban Decay. It's quite a dry formula. Very dry, very dry, um, which has obviously created fallout. Uh, not a problem, just wish I knew that because I would have done my eyes first. But so goes life. Um, I tried to do like a really smoky, just like messy, kind of glittery brown eye. I really liked this shade right here called Dream Weaver. Dream Weaver. Really like it. It's pulling off nicer in person. I really like the grungy vibe of this. Um, moving on swiftly, because that's just the eyeshadow. It's lovely. Glad I have it. I actually really like this look. I think with a pair of lashes, it would look top notch. Um, and I like, I like the rose tones in it as well, like the rose gold. I actually, I, I like it. I hated on this palette and actually I, I quite like it. So I think with a bit of glitter glue, maybe it would like intensify a bit more. Okay, very, very quickly, because I'm not really a liner person. I've got this product and I think it's weird. So I thought I'd mention it because it's very fitting for this video of weird products. This is the Ciate Stamp and Drag. Apply wing stamp on the outer corner of the eye. Use felt tip to line the eye and join the wing. I mean, we've seen them before. It's not like super, super uber duper weird, but I thought we'd just try it. This is what the eyeliner looks like. You probably can't see it, so I'm gonna... It's very pigmented, I appreciate that. I feel like I've got a collection of swatches. That Ritual Defeat actually looks lovely on the hand. Just not quite as much on the face. But yeah, okay, that's the, that's the stamp. Mm, that was bloody easy, okay. And then you use the pen. I don't know. Um, it's all right. It's not as precise as I'd like it to be, but it's all right. Hmm, what do I think of this? I think it's kind of cool, I kind of get it. Will I use it? Probably not, because I find it fast. I just uh, whoosh, 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 draw a wing. It's all right. I feel like you can't get any other shape than this. So if you don't like this shape, then that's gonna be inherently quite, you know, it's gonna be a problem. Okay, mascara. This video is incredibly long. I've got the Sport Effects mascara. Look at this tube. Look at sexy this is i feel like it's so i feel like a wand if it's like harry potter um this is it this is the packaging for it It says game changing mascara it's waterproof and miracle remover which intrigues me and i feel like we're going to try this out when i take this off later the packaging has got like these water droplets on i don't know if you can see that yeah you can probably see that if i get even closer really like this and it's really cold as well so we're going to try out both ends this is the game changing miracle remover and on the other side it says game changing waterproof mascara so undo it i really like the packaging of this i think it's really cool what is that oh my god it's like sludge let me just scrape some of this off oh my god it's like thick tar what on earth is going on in fact, let me just coat it in there again so you can see what it comes out like. That is what it comes out like. It actually doesn't look too bad on camera. I promise you, this is like thick with sludge of mascara. There needs to be a better, um, like, plungy thing in there because that is ridiculous. Okay, here goes nothing. Oh, this is thick. This is very thick. Okay, it was a bit of a trial to try and get this on. However, I don't think it's a bad mascara. I think if I didn't have so much eye makeup on, you probably would be able to see it better. But you can see here, it offers like some nice, nice volume. Separates out the lashes. I think this is like a perfect going to the gym or the pool mascara. It offers enough. It, it offers enough. It's not the sort of thing I wear on a night out. It doesn't separate out the lashes enough for me. And it's just a little bit too thick. The lower lash line looks nice and grungy. I think with this look, it's, it's pretty. Um... It's not like a bad mascara, but it's just not my favourite. I have actually, believe it or not, got a pair of lashes. I've got two pairs of lashes here. These are weird, so they're in the video. These are the Allure Pro Magnetic Magnetic Liner and Lash System with natural fibre lashes. Easy application, up to 15 wears. Um, that's why I kind of went for this liner grungy look, because I thought we could apply some lashes. Um, I think I'm going to go with these more wispier style. I've got two. This fluttery light uh, 117, which is I think what I'm going to use today. Camera's not really focusing, but whatever. And this is fluttery intense 179, which I think would look awesome with a brighter look. I'm going to use fluttery light 117. So let's get into these. Okay, it just says step one: apply three coats of liner. Okay, three coats of liner across the entire length of lash line. Allow each layer to dry completely. 
Last step two, apply lashes directly to the liner and press to secure. For best magnetism, build a liner to be as thick as the lash band. Holy guacamole. If you need to remove lashes to adjust, make sure you reapply fresh coats of liner before reattaching. Damn. Okay. Okay, whilst I let that one dry, I'm gonna go for this side. There's a lot of product on here, by the way, a lot of product. Okay, you can actually tell when it's dry. I really don't know if you'll be able to see this, but it's like goes a bit matte when it's dry. Three coats though, is this actually serious? I feel like this is a lot of effort for a pair of lashes. Like I could have just applied a normal pair of lashes with some glue and they're also reusable. This is a lot of effort. And I'm interested to see how hard it is to take this off as well. Okay, whilst we wait a day and a literal age for that to dry, because I don't want to sit here fanning myself, there's other stuff to do. Um, I have two lip primers. I want to try this one first, because it's a plumping lip primer. And this one is by Lime Crime, it's the Ghost Veil. They came out of this like last year, maybe. And this is just a lip primer to make things last longer. So I thought I'd do like a half and half with this but also just apply this all over the lips anyway, because this is the Project Lip Matte Plumping Lip Primer. Warning, this product will tingle. Um, it just looks like this. I mean, not really much to show you. It says how to apply. Apply it generously uh, on the lip and over the lip line. Press your lips together to activate and reapply to maximize the plump as desired. Okay. I might, um, ooh, ooh, yes. I can feel that coming through. Ooh. Oh, that's not tingly, that's spicy. Mmm. 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 Feels like I've rubbed a chilli on my lips. This is actually quite uncomfortable. I don't recommend that. That's actually spicy bumhole lips. Oh my god. Who approved this? This is burning me. If you love rubbing chilli on your lips, you're gonna love this product because it feels exactly the same. Oh my god, my lips. Do they look plump? I mean, actually they kind of do. So maybe it has worked, but geez, I don't think it's gonna last long enough for me to warrant feeding like this, man. Doing this now hurts, genuinely hurts. Okay, the eyeliner is still wet. You can still see it shining. So we're gonna just move on to lips. Um, this is the Lime Crime Ghost Veil Primer. I've been, I'm not gonna lie, I bought this a year ago. I quite like that it's almost like, it looks like it's been, worn off but it hasn't it's been in this box it's like it says ghost fail but it's all like ghostly you can't really see it <sighs> that reminds me of an alcoholic beverage wait it reminds me of refreshers not an alcoholic beverage okay let's apply said primer to this side well you can definitely see the line i feel like it definitely does look milky that's cool i want to let that dry as this dries i'm going to go back up to mascara sorry not mascara lash gate and we're gonna apply these lashes. So this is what they look like in the casing. They just look like this. They got these little magnets attached to them. Here goes nothing. Oh my God, what? Oh my God, what, 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 what? Oh my God. I think I've already come up with another problem is that you have to actually stick it on the lash line and not next to the lashes, which is what I don't like. I like to have my lashes really close to my natural lashes as possible to integrate into them these are some wings these are like whoa, flap flap away you know these are the light version oh my god this is a disaster help i don't like them i think they look hideous i think they genuinely look hideous i think it's because they're too long do you reckon i can snip a bit off Oh God, look. No, they're too long. This is crazy. I'm gonna try and snip a bit off. I don't really care anymore. I've taken like a whole chunk off and I think this is actually gonna be nicer. Oh, I see, I prefer that. That's more of a light look for me. This side looks really heavy and they make them look cheap. Whereas this one, I mean, they weren't actually that cheap. They were about 10 pounds a lash, which I don't think is very cheap. Whereas this one, I feel like I wish I almost did like not a grungy look. I don't know if you can see it, but it just looks a bit better. It looks more fitting for my eye shape, whereas this looks, I don't like this. I don't like overhang. I don't like overhang that much. So I wanna try and take this one off. That's better. Oh, it's so much better. Okay, I'm so glad I did that. Yeah, it said you couldn't reapply the lashes 
uh, if you take them off and you have to reapply more liner. I don't know what they're talking about because I haven't had to. These are heavy, these are thick, these are speaking for themselves. They are large and they are in charge. Not quite what I'm used to. I mean, I kind of, no, I don't like it. I think they look like cow lashes. I don't like it. I don't live for it. The verdict of these, more hassle than they're worth. Quite honestly, I think the cut of them isn't that nice. Like for a light, um, for a, like a light lash. Can you imagine what these ones look like? I probably will look like an actual farm cow. So I'm not sure about these. In fact, no, I, I just know I'm not. I don't like them. So this is now dry, thank God. Um, I thought I'd pick up the Kaleidos lip clays and I thought I'd pick up the weird colours. Again, I don't like discriminating against colours, but they're weird in my eyes because there's something I wouldn't pick. Ooh, I can definitely feel the resistance on this side. I'm gonna go wear this around the house and cook some dinner, things like that. I won't have this on for very much longer. I'll probably just have it on for another three or four hours. Okay, I am back. It has been officially three hours. It's only been three hours, okay? So I feel like this wasn't really a wear test. I feel like I look a little bit balding today. What's going on? Um, it's been about three hours. I had some dinner, I've eaten, I've mooched on the sofa. One thing I want to discuss before I talk about the lips actually is the amount of fallout underneath my eyes right now. Can you see that? There was no, well, there was a little bit, but not as much as this, which means the eyeshadow has continually fallen out, I suppose you could say. Really, really messy. Like, look at that. You can see there, all under there. All along here is actually on top of my lip as well. Really bad. The foundation, I've got to be honest, I don't think I'm, I think it's actually the concealer. I'm not sure, but it's like broken up a little bit. It's not done too, too great, but I think with another primer, more hydrating on, it would have been a bit better. But the concealer was no bueno, no bueno. The, uh, this whole lash situation I detest. Look, I think, do you know what it is? Is I had a look in the mirror and I think because the eyeliner is so thick and lumpy and uneven, here especially, and here, I think it looks awful and I don't really like the shape of the lashes. I think they're just way too heavy. Like they're just, they're just slop, like sloped down and I like mine to be like lifted and ooh, you know? Um, the lips. Mm. I mean, I've been eating like, not oily food, but like relatively, you know, saucy food. Hmm. I think this side is gently more pigmented. Yeah, this side has definitely stayed on a bit more. It's not incredibly different, but I can just tell here has more pigment than here. Like even when this is worn off a tiny bit in the corners, it's worn off a tiny bit. But if I compare this to that, it's just like, you can just tell it's faded a bit more on this side than it has this side. I think I already spoke on the eyelashes, didn't I really? Complete duds. I hate them. I think they're awful. Time now to not only take these lashes off, so let's do that first. Okay, so for this one it said how to remove. Simply brush the remover wand over your lashes to coat them in the miracle remover. Leave the remover on for 20 seconds and gently sweep away with a wet cloth or makeup wipe and watch the miracle remover dissolve every last trace of waterproof mascara. So, are we ready? It just looks like this clear, clear wand. Okay. Ah! Oh, it's wet. Was not expecting that. Okay, I wanna like get over here as well. I think the first test is to take this and just kind of hold it on the eye that doesn't have anything and just see kind of what level comes off. I don't like to rub my eyes too much, so I'm just gonna... Okay, that eyeliner is on there to stay. So, you know, a lot came off. Let's just, with the clean bit here, Okay, so I can see how this works. Essentially, it's just a sort of, it's just oil in the remover side, I think. It's just like an oily texture to it. So I've got to be honest, like this side is better at removing it. I think what I'd actually do in practice is 
remove as much as I can with micellar gel which is how I prefer to remove things, the Garnier micellar gel. And then I'd go in with this as a remover to kind of take away any remains. Um, oh God, that eyeliner is whooping my ass. This hasn't come off, whereas the kind of the oily emollient remover has removed it from, I've got a bit of eyeliner still chilling here. Yes, it's so gross. Look at it, just like clings like Ugh, gross stuff. I'm gonna go take off the rest of my makeup because I look a little bit crazy. In fact, should we have a look and see what happens? Oh, okay, not a lot happens. I was gonna say what about the lip primer, but actually it looks identical. I'm gonna go take this off because I look crazy and I'll be back to outro this video so I don't look homeless. <laughs> I've properly cleansed my face now. I've double cleansed. I used my little brush and everything. I've properly washed my face. Everything feels good. That glitter is still there and my eyes genuinely hurt from that eyeliner i think it's just been so heavy on my lash line but everything came off all right thank you guys for watching uh sorry that i'm finishing the video looking a bit like a bean um thank you guys so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed it today if you have tried any of these products out please let me know like what did you think of them did you think they were a little bit weird as well because i think all of these products were just a little bit weird for one reason or another um but yeah let me know if you use them thank you so much for watching once again i hope you have enjoyed hit the thumbs up button if you have subscribe if you haven't already and ring the bell because then you'll be notified of all the videos i upload i upload every single week so yeah i hope you've enjoyed today's video talk to me down below and leave me a thumbs up and yeah take care stay safe and i'll see you in the next one bye